Hello and welcome to week 11 of our 12 weeks of Christmas buying guide videos. I'm James from Carlson Cameras and today we'll be talking about binoculars and scopes. When it comes to binoculars, the first thing you're going to want to worry about is the use of them. So if you're buying for somebody who is a keen hiker, is a, wants to carry the minimum amount of weight but have something that just boosts their vision that much, and then something small, something compact like these, I'm going to do the trick. They are nice and lightweight. They come in varying different powers and sizes. Um, you'll find that the magnification tends to be between 8 and 15 times. Anywhere in that sort of range, anything much more, you're going to find you're going to be shaking too much, especially with something so small and so light. And the joys are they'll pack down into any sort of backpack, any hiking gear, or you can just wear it around your neck and not really notice it for the day. Moving up, you can then get into a sort of slightly bigger set of binoculars. Bigger binoculars tend to have bigger front elements, which is the second digit. When you look at a box of binoculars, they'll say 8x32 or 10x42, something like that. The second set of digits relate to the size of the binoculars. The bigger the number, the bigger the front element in the binoculars, the more light it's going to let in. So if you're buying for sort of a keen birder or somebody who is going to keep it on them but not necessarily take it with them everywhere, then a bigger set of binoculars are often going to be better. The difference between our ranges, we're going to start with RSPB, move up to Opticron, and then we end up with Steiner. So really there is a price point for everyone. Um, the difference is going to be in the optical quality. Steiner, precision German optics, absolutely brilliant. Ultra sharp, especially with their new lens coatings. Anything like that. These are for the, the sort of the serious users, anyone who wants the utmost in quality. Steiner have a bit of a unique selling point as well. They do a series of binoculars specifically for sort of um, out on open water, they're a navigation series of binoculars. Absolutely brilliant, the optics are superb and they are sort of splash and water resistant. Nothing's waterproof, but you will get as you go up the range, as you go up the price range, you'll find you get more things like anti-fog elements, which means cold mornings specifically. The lenses don't fog up. Um, anything like that. It's a big selling feature if you're looking for something, you know, if you're out at 6 o'clock in the morning in autumn, winter. That's the sort of thing you want to look for. Opticon, some of the best optics outside of Europe. These are absolutely brilliant. Superb value for money. Um, if you are thinking, right, all I need is a spot on pair of binoculars, what's the first thing you're going to recommend? For us, it's probably going to be something like the Opticon Trail Finders, it's got the T3s, um, super solid pair of binoculars, excellent optics. We tested them against some RSPBs and some Steiners. We really couldn't tell the difference. They're sort of half the price of a pair of Steiners. The quality is absolutely superb. They're also sponsored by David Lindo, who is known as the Urban Birder. Um, there's a load of videos on his website, exactly what to look for. He's sort of sponsored by Opticron or ties in with Opticron. Um, but the, anything with his name on it, you know it's going to be superb quality. RSPB are probably best value for money. So if you're sort of getting a present for someone who's just starting out, you've got something like these puffins at the front here. These are super cheap, super small, super easy to use. Any sort of children, younger members of the family that you're buying for, just it, they are really spot on. It's also nice to know you're helping a, a good cause as well. Canon, however, they've moved into the binocular game with a rather unique feature in that in their pairs of binoculars, they've stuck the same image stabilisation technology they use in their, um, the EOS and EF lenses. What that means is, any time that you're shaking, you press a button down on the pair of binoculars, it steadies that image, it cancels out the rocking. Perfect if you're on a boat, if you're on safari, anything like that. The press of a button, you get a nice crisp image through the eyepieces. Moving on to scopes, we have quite a range of scopes. Um, it starts from anything like this, which is um, a cam link spotting scope. Something this small, absolutely perfect if you're looking to get into digiscoping, which is where you attach a digi uh, digital compact camera to the back. You use this as a sort of a zoom lens. Anything like this, they're brilliant. They have zooming eyepieces. So as you rotate this, it'll go from anything from 15 times magnification all the way up to 45. These are perfect if you don't mind having to carry a tripod with you. They're very, very difficult to handhold. Anything over 15 times, which is what you tend to be the maximum of binoculars, you'll notice that any little movement 
it's magnified so much that it can all effectively make you seasick. So something like this, brilliant, need a tripod. Excellent for tabletops. If you've got a um, bird feeder at the end of your garden and you think, ah, oh, you just want to capture something down there, something like this, something nice and neat like this, it's going to be perfect. You can move up, you get bigger and bigger and bigger until you get something like this. So this is our Opticon. Um, it's got an 80mm front element, which is huge. It lets a lot of light in, which is what it needs to deal with the magnification. The joys of something like this, it's a bit of a modular system. You can take the eyepieces off, and you get new eyepieces, you get higher quality eyepieces, you get bigger magnification eyepieces. Anything like that, it just boosts the power of your, of your telescope, of your spotting scope. Um, it does make it sort of that much more future-proof. We also do stock, uh, stock a range of sort of astroscopes from Celestra. They're sort of very, very big, very good. And um, there's a, in that sort of range, there'll be a price point for everyone and there'll be sort of unique features to each one. So as you move up the range, you'll start with sort of a, a rather squat, but sort of powerful enough to see stars and everything else. Um, you can move up and you get to the point where you've got motorized tripod effectively. So it will follow the movement as you go. So it keeps stars steady. It moves you know, fractionally. But in the same way as photographing light and star trails, you'll find that as we spin, everything will move slightly throughout your viewfinder. So if you're looking for one constellation, you can type it in, it comes with a five bit of software, tell you where exactly where to point it, what to set it to, and then your telescope will automatically follow. So something like that, if you're a keen astronomer or just starting out, then something in there is going to suit you to the ground. As with everything, with binoculars, scopes, telescopes, it's always worth trying to get your hands on them first. Um, you know, our, our website's going to have a lot of the details, a lot of the weights, a lot of the... Um, but what it comes down to is the size of your hands, how comfortable something feels in there, because really these are things that you're going to be using a lot. Um, make perfect Christmas presents. I hope that's helped. And uh, comment, rate and subscribe to our channel if you like the video. Uh, you can also follow us on Twitter, at Castle Cameras, and like us on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash Castle Cameras. Cheers, and we'll see you again for week 10.